All right, we're live. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Or uh, if you're asleep, thanks for tuning in. Uh, wherever you are in the world, we're really, really happy you're here. Uh, we just had a big launch this morning, which is uh, the Figma community. Internally, we've been calling this the COCO launch for community and collaboration. I'm Dylan, the CEO and co-founder of Figma. And, and I'm Jenny, one of the product designers here at Figma. Yes, we're so thankful that you joined us this morning. Um, Excited to introduce the Figma community to all of you. Uh, this is something that we've been working on for quite a long time, but also we're going to introduce uh, some collaboration features as well. Yeah, um, so the another feature that we're releasing today is a new Figma workspace. Um, it's basically redesigned with the idea of making files and projects easier to find. Um, so we're excited to show you a demo of that a little bit later on today. Um, and we thought for the, this live stream, we thought it would be great to give you a little behind the scenes um, into the inspiration, thinking, and the process behind all the features that we're releasing today. Um, so we're going to do this little sort of format thing where I'm going to ask three, three, I'm going to ask Dylan three questions about sort of the vision behind the community. Um, and then Dylan's going to ask me some questions about the more of the collaboration side of things. Ready? Let's do it. <laughs> um, okay. So first question. Dylan, yes. um, can you give everyone a little bit of like the background behind like what really inspired today's release and like how it really started to come to fruition? Yeah, so about four years ago, uh, we started working on multiplayer, which is a way for you to be in the same file at the same time with your teammates working on different design aspects. And uh, as we've seen how people use multiplayer over the past four years, we've started to realize that uh, people, once they get into this multiplayer world, they're able to work much more openly, much more collaboratively with each other. And we're seeing teams start to change their process as well. Designers are starting to bring in engineers, product managers, marketing people into the process, but also they're starting to be more willing to share their files more publicly with the world. And so we started seeing like on Twitter, on social media, on Dribbble, uh, people have been posting their Figma files uh, in a way that other people can then consume them. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to kind of memorialize and that behavior and make it so that people were able to uh, do that in a more repeatable way. Because that was sort of the inspiration for the Figma community. Uh, and the vision is to make a way for people to then take those live files, put them out into the world, and make it so that everyone is able to use them uh, in a way that's licensed appropriately uh, in their work as well. So they can like view source for design, uh, so they can like inspect a file, uh, but also remix files, and then learn from each other as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I want to dig a little bit more into that um, because I know that you've been talking to a lot of customers recently. Um, so I'd love for you to just sort of share it with like everybody um, some of the things that you've learned from that. For sure. Uh, so yeah, as we kind of got ready for this launch, we talked with a ton of different customers. Um, some of the ones that stand out, one that uh, was really neat to see was Slack, who already has a website around their uh, sort of way that they can create bots in Slack. And they've now made a design kit as well that you can see in Figma. Um, Dropbox is another one that it published their team values toolkit inside of Figma. Uh, for all of you who love to Unsplash out there, which is a lot of you, it's one of our most popular plugins, uh, you can now uh, use Unsplash's profile photos uh, in your design with a, a file that's published live in Figma today. Um, I was also really impressed with some of the schools out there. So Lambda School and also Stanford D School uh, are both publishing files where they are making it so that you're able to see more design resources on the Figma community. But I think the one that I'm, I'm most excited for is actually the city of Chicago. Uh, and you can see this at figma.com slash at Chicago. And uh, that, uh, the file they published is sort of a way for you to see their upcoming uh, design system, both for their UI, for their website, but also for their brand overall. Uh, and you can remix it yourself in order to kind of participate in the brand. Uh, and I think this notion of a participatory brand is something that's gonna be uh, really interesting and might be something that we see in the future more of. Yeah, I, I really like that uh, Chicago example because I don't think I ever really imagined that Figma could be used for something like that. So yeah. it's crazy. I, I'm like really curious to see what else will happen. Um, so yeah, with that, like, what are you hoping to see customers actually do with the Figma community? And like, where do you really want it to go in like a year from now? Yeah. Um, oh, I, 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 first of all, I think like, it's not up to us. Uh, we have to build this with the community. And so we're looking for all of your feedback uh, and we're looking for your support and your ideas as we go build this out. There's some stuff that's like super obvious we gotta do. Uh, this is you know, definitely a beta launch and we know that there's a, like, a lot of things we have to polish. Um, but as we build the product more and add feedback loops, add ways for you to discover content, uh, but also other aspects of the community, 
we're going to be looking to our users because I think we think you can build this on your own. We're not that presumptuous, at least. Uh, one of the big ones that I think we need to, uh, we'll be paying a lot of attention to is around licensing. Uh, so today you'll be able to publish with a CC4 license, which means that you can, other people will be able to remix your work even for commercial purposes. Uh, in the future, uh, we'll also, as long as they attribute, so it's not completely public domain. Uh, in the future, we're going to make it so that there'll be more license types available, but we're still figuring out what those are and we wanna work with the community and get your input uh, rather than just kind of like thinking, okay, here's the licenses that we think cover like a big span of use cases and going from there. I think long-term, super long-term, uh, I'm excited about how do you make it so that people can work across different team boundaries in the Figma mm -hmm. community. Um, for example, so Square uh, Crypto, uh, Square Crypto is already contributing code to Bitcoin as a protocol in an open source way. Mm -hmm. And they approached us when we were kind of in this beta, pre-beta period and asked, is there a way to do this for design as well? Uh, and you know, it's, it's a pretty hard ask because they want to do it in a way that's super open, very transparent, and uh, with the ethos of the Bitcoin community. Um, and, but I think if you could nail that and figure out how you can make it so that people could collaborate across these team boundaries, across geographic boundaries on design Figma, uh, we might be able to bring design to open source in a brand new way, which to me is incredibly exciting. Yeah, it's crazy, it's crazy. Awesome, well, I've got three questions for you. Cool. I have them on this note card, so I make sure I don't forget <laughs> them. Uh, so first off, uh, Jenny, you started Figma three, four months ago? Yeah, oh my gosh, feels like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, so you're, you're already a veteran, um, the, uh, but as you started Figma, I mean, I feel like I basically pulled a bomber on you and was like, community, community, community. Uh, and that was your sort of input from us for this entire product process. Uh, and from there, you've like come up with this amazing result along with our members of the team. How did you go about to kick off the design process and take this like really big nebulous problem and figure out how to approach it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like you mentioned, um, we knew that people were already using multiplier and that it was already really changing the way that designers were working with their teams. Um, but we didn't really have like a precise way to say like exactly how that was changing how people were working with their teams. Um, so we kicked off this whole thing with a pretty big research study um, just to learn about who designers were working with and how exactly they were working together. Um, and things that we found were just like, designers weren't just like collaborating with other designers inside Figma. Um, they were bringing in their PMs, engineers, writers, as well as marketing people um, and trying to get them in as early as possible to get feedback. Um, but at the same time, Figma was still just like this place where you like go inside your design file and you work. Um, and it wasn't necessarily easy for everybody to find the things that they were looking for. Um, so we decided we really wanted to tackle that problem to help people both work better within their teams as well as with the greater community. Um, and I also want to note that I think this is like a really good example of like not having to have this like huge team in order to do a research study like this. Um, we only really have one researcher in-house right now, um, but doing this study, even though it was like big and sort of nebulous at the beginning, was totally worth it. Yeah. It was definitely, I mean, I think from someone who hasn't been through this research process before, uh, you know, I think it's easy to have this sort of ignorant perspective of like, wow, I've been working on this for seven years now. Uh, what surprises will we actually have? The answer is actually a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was super impressed with just like a small but mighty research team, how we're able to go about that and get these core insights. Yeah. So that was really neat. Okay, second question. Um, as you look back, uh, at this entire process, what was the hardest design problem that we had here? Yeah, so I think we went into this knowing that we'd have to create some representation of people both like internally in their companies as well as like externally to the public, to the community. Um, but it was sort of balancing this whole like, should we make them feel like exactly the same both internally and mm. externally or should we make them feel different? Um, and I think there's trade-offs in that like, we wanna make these profiles like feel like they're a representation of like the same person and the same identity. Um, but at the same time, there's like very different use cases internally versus externally. Um, so what we ended up landing on was like these two pretty separate entities where like the internal profile is something that's great for like a coworker to look at um, and see the internal profile and understand like your work in progress, like all the edits and comments that you've been making um, versus the public profile is something that you find on Figma community and it's much more polished and it's like the best representation of yourself. Um, and it has like your published profile or your published files and your plugins. So two separate things. Um, it was sort of like, it seems simple now, but I think it was really hard to come to that conclusion. Yeah, yeah. I think what's most, 
the best design problems are the ones where it is really complex and you're able to figure out a yeah. solution. Um, okay, last question. Uh, for this release today, mm -hmm. what's the feature that you personally are most excited about? Yeah, um, so I'm really excited that we are going to be starting to surface context like all throughout the Figma workspace. Um, and what I mean by context is like giving people the opportunity to the opportunity to really define like what the problem is that they're solving with this design or like the goals of the project or really who worked on this project. Um, and you'll sort of see this like manifest in the demo um, it, through our different like organization pages, team pages, project pages, um, where we'll have like a little place for you to actually add that context. Um, but we're also gonna be introducing like um, a list view as well as pin files and contributor data. Um, so that way when you get to a piece of work, you understand like what's most important and like where you should sort of go next. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for all of those things. Yeah, as someone who can never remember file names uh, and is constantly pinging the team and you know, like, hey, where is this? Yeah, uh, exactly. My hope is that this will be a way for you to receive a lot less uh, of Slack messages from me <laughs> bugging you. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. 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 All right, demo time? Yes, let's, let's jump into a demo. Okay, so um, this is the new Figma workspace that you'll be seeing within the next few weeks or so. Um, and this specific page is actually something that we're calling the organization page. Um, so if you're a part of an organization, you'll have a page like this where you'll see a description of the organization, um, some members, and on this page, a bunch of the teams that are inside the organization. Um, so from here, you can jump into a team. Um, you can join a team, leave a team. Um, so let's just leave this team and then we can join. Um, and then you can also click into this specific team. Um, so from this team, we have all the projects that the team is working on um, and also the members of, of this team. So I can click into say Tom and see the things that Tom is working on. Um, and Tom has, you know, all these projects or all these files that he's edited and commented on, um, as well as the teams that Tom is a part of and the recent projects that he's a part of. Um, so I can click into one of those teams um, and see a similar space for that team, as well as like a description for the team and then members of that team. Um, and then click into one of the projects from here. Um, and in this project, there's only one file right now, but you can say like, oh, let's go into this one here. Um, and then from here, you can either pin- The law of demos, yes. by the way. <laughs> um, you can pin specific files, but you can also view files in a list view. Um, so to make it easier to parse and sort of understand, be able to view things like alphabetically and like from last modified. Um, and then as for the file publishing flow, which is another part of our release today, um, I can just go to any file that I've created. Um, and then within the panel on the left here, um, I can say publish publicly. Um, I can add a little like description as well as the support contact and then publish the file. This is the Figma NPS bingo. <laughs> it's a really great file. <laughs> um, and then once I publish it, I can view the file. Um, and then this actually is a publicly available page that you'll be able to get through to through this like URL. Um, and from here, I can click duplicate if I wanted to create a copy of this file. Um, and this is a forked version that's actually not like related to the original file. Um, and from here, I can like modify this file, even publish this file myself if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, it's this is like the published file. So I can go copied. in then and I can rip off your file and then make my own bingo, NBS bingo card for Figma. Yeah, totally. Um, you can use this for your own team if you wanted to. Um, and then going back to the file page, I can get to my own public profile from here. Um, so here is like, public profile that I can find at like figma.com slash at Jenny. Um, and I have a few files that I've already published here as well as a plugin that I've created um, that anybody can see and use. It's awesome. By the way, if you are viewing live, the word count plugin that Jenny made, super good. Thanks, Dylan. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's our demo for today. Awesome. Cool. So uh, we can wrap up now. The um, uh, First off, thank you so much for joining on this live stream. Uh, Again, we're just really excited to share all this with you. Uh, we are um, 
we've worked pretty hard on this for the last few months, but there's a lot more ahead. And so we're excited to see how you uh, work in the Figma community. If you want to reserve your handle, as I'm sure many people do, uh, fill out a form. We'll tweet it soon. And we'll also, I think, share it with the live stream participants. And uh, for that form, uh, when you fill it out, we'll be letting people in uh, who basically have great files to share. So make sure that you put a, a file in that share dialogue and also make that file publicly available so we can see it. Um, and over the next few months, we'll be letting people into this closed beta uh, and learning from that. So that's why I want to do it in, in sort of uh, over the next few months is because I want to make sure that we're improving the beta as we go. Uh, for the project pages and the profiles for inside of Teams, those will actually go live over the next coming weeks. Uh, for many of you, will go live today. Uh, we're so excited for your feedback. So definitely write to us. Uh, you can write to the community at figma.com if you have uh, feedback on the community portion. But also feel free to tweet us. We're just Figma Design on Twitter. I'm uh, at Zoink and Jenny, are you? I'm at, at Jenny underscore Blind. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a good one. See ya.